I just want to tell y'all how glad I am to see y'all this morning and have this opportunity to share these quick few moments with you. You know, there's a lot going on. And um, just last night, there was a, a terrorist attack. What they're saying is a terrorist attack in Europe, in England, and you know, there's so much instability in our world today. There's so much uncertainty. There's so much unheal and unrest. You know, it makes you just want to hide, fear. You know, what do we do in this place? I want to tell you something. He is calling to us, come to me, all ye who are weary and heavy laden, who are burdened, who are just tired. And he says, I will rest you. I've got good news for you today. In spite of what's going on, not making light of what's going on, but greater is he. He has come for us. He said, for I so loved you that I gave my beloved son on your behalf. What in the world would compel him to do such a thing? His great, great love, not only for his son, but for you and for me. He's so loved, and it's that word that I want to I want to share with you today. In the midst of all that's going on, it's his love that will cause us to be rooted and grounded and to know a peace and a rest. Let's look at the word right now. What does the word say? It says right here and start beginning in chapter 8 of Romans, verse 31. What shall we say then to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Do you know today that God is for you? I, I'm, he is for you. I'm telling you, He's for you. How can you be assured of this? Because He was willing to give His only begotten, His beloved Son, for you. He's for me. He gave Him for me. That's how we can know He is for us. He's not against us. I'll explain that in just a minute. You see, He who did not spare His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all, how shall he not with him, with Jesus, he gave us Jesus, then will he not also freely give us everything else, all things? Verse 33, who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It's God who justifies. Do you know that you are his elect? And he's justified you. That means he's removed all of those accusations against you. All of those things that would hold you captive, all of those things that would hold you as a debtor, that would hold you in a place of condemnation and shame. Do you know in Colossians it has said, let me just see real quick, I meant to have that one marked, because this is so, this is so awesome. In Colossians chapter 2 it says, and you, me being dead in our trespasses and the uncircumcision of our flesh. That just means in our natural self. Fancy talk for just our natural self. It says, He has made us alive together with Him. See, you're not alone. You're not in this by yourself. He has forgiven you all your trespasses and has wiped out. Here it is. He has wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us. There was a handwriting of requirements against you and against me. It was contrary to us. Let's see. And he has taken it out of the way. It no longer exists. Woohoo! He has nailed it to the cross, having disarmed the principalities and the powers. The very things that were against you, accusing you, Jesus took care of on the cross. It, it doesn't stand anymore. The blood of Jesus covers you. You are justified. That's good news. It says, so if he justified you, who can bring a charge against you? Listen, it says, also, who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died. 
And furthermore, it's also risen who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. He is for you. He is for me. He is for, he's for people. He's for us. Because he gave his life that and removed that which would stop and hinder and accuse us. He says, listen to this. Who shall separate us? Verse 35 in Romans 8. We're back in Romans 8. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation? Shall distress? Persecution? Famine? Being hungry, not having enough? Nakedness? Peril or sword? Who's going to separate it? Can these things separate us from the love of Christ? Verse 37, it says, Yet in all these things, we are more than conquerors. How? Through Him, what? That loved us. Today, you meditate on this. Don't you forget, the Bible says... I made a note of this. This is one in 1 John 4, 16. It says, we have known and believed the love God has for us. God is love. Today, I want to encourage you not only to know it, but believe it for you, that his love is for you, that it rescues you and delivers you and keeps you. Even in the midst of all these terrible things, tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, naked, it doesn't mean that we're not going to have these things in our lives. His love is for us. He is with us to see us through. It says, through Him who loved us, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. Let's remember and meditate on that today. Stay in His love. How do we do that? It says in Jude 21, Keep yourself in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Looking. What are we focusing on? Don't focus on those troubles. The Bible says that it's the cares of this world that will choke this out. Don't let the enemy choke it out of you by where you choose to keep your focus. Focus on His love. Meditate on His love. I love you and I look forward to seeing you next time. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this opportunity we have together. Lord, I pray, Lord, that you would open the eyes of our understanding and cause us to see and know what is the height, the width, the breadth and depth of your love, that we might be filled with all your fullness. I come against a spirit of fear because you said you have not given us a spirit of fear, but of love, of power, and a sound mind. Lord, may the revelation of your love be so overwhelming that Lord, truly as your word says, it cast out all fear. Father, thank you for your love. Thank you for your presence with us. And it's in Jesus' precious name we pray.